Hello, in this part, I'm gonna talk about the features of rebar constraint since it was frequently asked. And as you are concerned, while reinforcing your structural elements, you will be encountered with the rebar constraint editing options that as you can see in this view I have provided them. And the rebar constraints helps you to control your bars betterly. Anyway, in the continuation, let's talk about these shapes the, that I have sketched them. But first of all, we're gonna deal with the construction of the, each of them. Then we're gonna give you more information about them. Here note that, as you can see, we got six icons for six cases or six options, which are divided in three groups. In the first group or the category, it is specifying the distance between constrained bar segments. You can either constrain the rebar set with respect to the center of each other, or to the faces of each other. In these two options, at least two rebar sets are required, that we can lock the rebar sets with respect to the targets, which are the centers and the covers or the faces of each other that these icons or options will be available if you choose constraint. The next option is constraint to the face or to the cover, as you can see on the screen. Actually, during my instructions, I have only been emphasizing on the icons and their shapes, since you can elicit important points and tips from the icons. I mean, while the icons are being designed, they are highly associated to their purpose. So here, the colors, the geometry, the line, all of this just wants to show the function of this tool or this icon. I mean, the rule of icon is to convey a message by displaying the geometry like a logo, which introduces the production of a company. Anyway, here, as you can see, we got two options. Here, we got dotted line, as you can see, which means that by using this tool, we can constrain the rebar with, res with respect to the cover of the concrete element, or in other words, the cover is considered as the constraint. In this icon, we got dotted line, which is a symbol of cover. While at the another option, which means that locking the rebar instance with respect to the face of the concrete element. So following that, we can specify the distance of the constraint. In the continuation, I will show you these during the modeling. But about the next options, which are two-way constraints, that it locks the rebar instances with respect to two directions. For example, in this option, as you can see, it is two-way constraints. It means that the constraint is going to be defined for the two directions. That if you modify the length of the rebars, the changes will be applied on two directions, like the dowel bars which are used in mesh network, that we specify the stands for them for overlapping, that if the length of the bars will change, the overlapping distance will be preserved because of the specified distance for the constraint, or both bars and target move together when moving or dragging either one. But if we use the one-way constraint, they don't move together. So these are the symbols and the icons of each of these options that you need to know. In the continuation, let's work on some examples in the real project. And here I have provided a file which is not complex. And I'm gonna teach you the constraints. For example, here I got a steer up by this way. I select my steer up, then I click on edit constraints. After that, I can edit the handles and the targets. And you can see the dotted line and the bar which is please placed inside the box. Which means that the steer up is constrained with respect to the cover of the concrete element. So I select the steer up again. And right now, as you can see, the yellow color is associated to the cover of the concrete element. So the constraint is associated to the cover. Here if I define minus 20, the distance will be added in relation to the target, which is the cover. And if I specify 0, it places on the cover. But if I click on toggle rebar cover constraint, it toggles the target which the handles is constrained to. So by this time, the bar is constrained to the face of the concrete element. You can define the offset, minus 60. And finally, you can click on finish to save the change. Changes. Very well. Let's cover other options. For example, here as you can see, I got two mesh networks which are overlapping each other. I select one of them, then I want to edit the constraint by this way. 
as you can see the constraint is defined before but if i select another handle by this way i can toggle the bar constraints as you can see we got a two-way constraint but what it means firstly let me cancel the command here if i measure the distance check this out 4719 very well again i select the mesh i edit the constraint then i constrain the bar end set to the bar start set then i define the offset 1200 by this way for example then i save the changes then if i expand the length of the bar set because of the two-way constraint as you can see the handle and the target are moving together and the offset is preserved or if i select the another bar set and then i move the bar set check this out they are moving together because the bar ends are constrained together but if i toggle the bar constraint to one-way constraint then the constraint will be specified to your selected object or the bar it very well in the continuation i'm, I'm going to talk about uh, specifying the distance between constrained bar segments center to center and face to face i open this section view for example here i got two rebar sets so let me edit the constraint this time i want to constrain bars together and i specifying this test between bar centers then i specify the two-way constraint and i specify the distance to define or specify a gap between the two rebar sets or 50 or minus 50 note that it a negative offset moves the bar ends apart anyway i define the offset and then the entered value was the distance between bar centers but if i toggle to clear bar distance then the entered value is the free distance between the bars or the free distance between their faces and then i click on finish and as you can see we got a two-way constraint here as well and note that these tools are very practical that I tried to cover all of the points and tips in the course of Revit structure from top to bottom technically.